Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be talking about urinary tract infections and why they keep coming back in the menopause. Now if you like this video blog and want to be notified of new ones each week then please click the subscribe button at the end of this video or at the end. Now why are urinary tract infections so common in the menopause and why can we get in the position where they basically just keep coming back and we can't seem to get rid of them. One of the main problems here is that the menopause can affect the production of mucus in the vagina. And I know it seems a bit weird, you know, we're talking about bladder infections, but we also need to talk about the vagina as well. Mucus in the vagina helps to sustain our friendly bacteria there and these are very different to the friendly bacteria that live in our digestive tract and one of the things that these friendly bacteria do in the vagina is that they police the whole vaginal area and that includes the opening of the urethra which is the tube that leads up to the bladder. So if the production of mucus in the vagina decreases this can have a marked negative impact on the level of friendly bacteria in the vagina and that can leave you much more vulnerable to picking up bladder infections. So that's just a, a really um, simple um, thing that, that can happen basically to an, an awful lot of us. The problem then is that cystitis is horrible, it's so uncomfortable, it's very, very painful. So we go to the doctors and we normally get prescribed antibiotics. The main problem with antibiotics is that they very often kill off the friendly bacteria. So they can then decrease the level of the friendly bacteria in the vagina even further and that will leave you even more vulnerable to repeat infections and at that point it just becomes a vicious cycle. You end up getting an infection, you take the antibiotics, you have less friendly bacteria, you get another infection and so on. And this for some women, you know, we've had women where this has lasted for months and months and months and when it gets too bad they then end up in, in hospital. So what can you do to prevent this? Because there are some very simple and easy things that you can just incorporate into your daily life that can be of benefit in this situation. First one, guess what? It's water, loads and loads of water. One of the other things that happens in the menopause is that the bladder, it's, it's Kind of known as what one of the mucous membranes, it can start to dry out a little bit. So the lining of the bladder can end up becoming thinner, it can also become much more sensitive to the type of urine that's being stored in the bladder. So if you are dehydrated and your bladder is starting to get very sensitive, then your urine will become very acidic, it will become very concentrated, and that is going to irritate your bladder even further. It's also going to make your bladder more prone to succumbing to these types of bacterial infections that, that cause cystitis. So keeping your bladder flushed with water on a daily basis is really, really important here. Um, and it's one of the main things that will help in this situation. The second thing here is don't let your bladder get overly full and don't hold on because it may have got to the point where your urine is starting to irritate the bladder and if you keep a hold of that for an hour or two, then it's just going to make everything worse. So if possible, and I know there are those of you in jobs where you can't just run to the toilet every five minutes, but if you can, the minute you feel that you need to go to do the toilet, then go, because that again is going to keep the bladder um, free of, of any kind of acidic urine. You need to avoid feminine products. You know, we do know that um, vagina smell can get stronger during the menopause, and so women will tend to use vaginal deodorants. 
Don't use things like harsh soaps and shower washes that are absolutely um, full of, of chemicals because these are going to dry out and irritate um, the, the opening to the bladder even further. And the weaker that is, then again, the more likely the bacteria are going to be able to get into the bladder. Um, just check also as well are you using um, sort of cotton underwear? What kind of soaps and fabric conditioners are, are you using on your underwear? Because again, that can irritate the whole vaginal area and, and make things um, more prone to these bacterial infections. Don't wear thongs in the menopause. And I have written a blog about this. I know it sounds a bit weird, but there'll be a link here and I'll go into that in a lot more detail. But but here, all that's happening is, if you're wearing thongs, then the, the actual um, strip part is held right up tight between your back passage and the vagina and the opening to the bladder. And bacteria can use that part of the thong to travel all the way down. And that, again, can be a contributory factor for bladder infections and also vaginal infections as well. If you're moving your bowels, always remember to wipe from the front to the back. Again, you don't want any bowel bacteria um, ending up in the vagina or in the, the bladder either. You can look at balancing your hormones here. So if it's appropriate, you could look at our menopause support. This is known to help um, get your estrogen levels up gently, so that might have a knock-on effect on supporting your friendly bacteria in the vagina and also helping to keep your bladder um, nice and, and healthy as well. Look at things like pelvic floor exercises and Pilates. These can be absolutely great for strengthening the bladder and, and keeping it in tip top condition. And that's, if you go for um, Pilates instruction, they can teach you very specific exercises that will keep your bladder nice and strong and also help to maintain your pelvic floor muscles, which is really important as you go through and after the menopause as well. You can try cranberry juice. This is a nice one for flushing out the nasty bacteria in the bladder. The only thing here is don't have it sweetened because sugary foods, sugary drinks, can help to um, feed those bacteria. So, you know, again, um, no sugar in the cranberry juice and try and cut down on sugar and other sweetness in your diet as much as possible. And that can sometimes help to lessen the likelihood of bladder infections. We also have a licensed product called Uva Ursi and Echinacea, which is traditionally used for bladder infections such as cystitis. Because it's not an antibiotic, it's not going to end up affecting the level of friendly bacteria in the, the vagina. So you're going to miss out on that step that's possibly going to um, lead to all these repeat infections. The other thing to do is maintain the friendly bacteria in your vagina. So look for a vaginal probiotic. It's important to go with one specifically for the vagina because, as I mentioned before, the level of friendly bacteria in the vagina are very different to digestive ones. There is a company in the UK called Optibac, which do one specifically for uh, the vagina, and it's called Optibac for women. So again, well worth taking if you're in this cycle of um, urinary tract infections. When do you need to see your doctor? If you are getting pain, if you are getting blood in your urine, if you're getting a temperature, if it's getting to the point where you can't cope with the pain, it really is important to go and check with your doctor. We know that antibiotics can be part of the problem, but sometimes you need the antibiotics just to get rid of the first infection but you need to then look at sustaining the friendly bacteria in the vagina and all these other things afterwards just to avoid um, this becoming one of these vicious cycles. Hope you found this one helpful. If any of you out there have any other tips that's going to help in this area, then we would love to hear from you. And until then, I will see you next week for another edition of A Vogel Talks Menopause.